Last week on Guyana 411, we looked at how, in a push to have uniformed communities, the government is moving to address squatting in Angois Avenue in Burbese. This week on Guyana 411, we'll shift our focus to the Garden City. More specifically, we turn our attention to the efforts being taken to complete the regularization and upgrading of what was once the largest squatter settlement in the city, Sophia. Stay tuned. The area now known as Sophia, an estate within Georgetown, was once an area of land previously used for the cultivation of rice and rearing of fish. The area was called Farmer's Field since it was used mainly for farming before it began to be occupied. It was all swamp and mud when persons decided to use the area for housing. The area developed during 1986, even though settling on the land was considered illegal at the time. However, persons continued to occupy the land. A few years later, almost 400 persons had moved into the area. Andrea Marx took up residence in Farmer's Field in the 1990s, as the area was becoming known as one of the largest squatter settlements in Guyana. I originate from Region 2, Dartmouth Village on the Escriba Coast. And due to when the new government take power, we all was out of job. So we, the only way we could do it, like move to Georgetown, where I end up seeking a security work on my first hand. And then I tell myself that paying rent is very rough in Georgetown. So in the meantime, while renting a little apartment on Onto Street, my sister came and told me she have a piece of land in Sophia. She get a piece of land in Sophia. And if I could, um, if I want it, I got to occupy it right away. Because I say, but where would I get the materials from for buy? Then she say, hey, got them buy the sell second hand wood. So I went through and I was throwing box. So I take my box on. And at them time, it was reasonable at Tulsi Pasar. And I get a half off for some wood. And I buy immediately. I buy my wood. During the 1990s, the demand for housing grew at such an alarming rate that from some initial setters of 400, the population in farmers feel quickly and increased to about 5,000 households. Mark says that she was forced to erect a shack and move in immediately or lose the land. It was no road. You don't want to know what we went through to get those material into Sophia, in the slush. Went through it with a cart, my two by son and my sister. We push. When we tired, we take a rest in the mud. We get up, we pull. When I get there, when I reach a young man, the man turned and tell me, he said, this land, eh? when you get this land, you got to build a move in. I said, but that is right away. He said, yes. So we start building. Night come and catch me. He said, we got to get somebody for watch Monday. They would. They play it because by the time you come back in the morning, all will be gone. So my two sons volunteer with, his, with one of the friends. Volunteer said, Mommy, look, buy some Kyle and we will stay in. Next day we went and we wrap up the small building and we move in. It's like squat because we, I didn't get the land through ministry. We went squatting. And that is where we take it from. And many people like myself, that's how we came in. And then they end up, some people know, when the land run out, they end up on the dam, squatting on the dam. Sophia today is subdivided into five fields that together contain 4,700 house lots, including reserve sites for playgrounds and other community projects, and 5,000 households. The estimated population is about 30,000 people. 
most of the development in the community came slowly and only through the zeal for development and property ownership of the residents. These predominantly vulnerable, low-income women and men who needed a land and a place to call home mobilized and lobbied for the regularization and development of the area. Some people live in actually 13 years, 12 years, a lot of years on it down. Even when we was going there, all things come many times to break with them. Many times. We all one head and we farm a body and we used to do a lot of protests in front of housing. Persistence and determination resulted in the area becoming one of the largest squatting settlements in the country to be converted into a housing scheme commonly known as Sophia. The development of the new housing schemes and upgrading of the squatter settlements saw residents paying for the land on which they lived and the Central Housing and Planning Authority, CHNPA, issuing them with titles for their land. CHNPA also moved to provide the community with the necessary social services needed. But whilst Sophia benefited from minimal infrastructural development, limited paved roads, limited electricity supply, or the basic public goods remained largely unattended for several years. Sophia had no good roads, Sophia had no sewage, Sophia had no electricity, Sophia had no garbage collection. Sophia did not have the service that is needed, the health centers, the schools, the markets, the transportation, the sanitation, streetlights, parks, playgrounds, fire hydrants. All these utilities and services were necessary if Sophia was to be fully developed and catch up with the other wards in Georgetown. In fact, sections of the community received far less attention than others. That is why we is like that. Because they skip the field and they go straight over to E-field. And on to now some people still in regularize. Get like title for their land and these kind of things because we were squatters. But at least you pay the money, and you pay your, you get for pay your money. Under this government, a lot of people went in, clear off the bill, and looking now for their transport. A lot of people uplift their transport since this new government take into power. It is sad to tell you that when I moved into Sophia, I used to use the black water to cook, to drink, and everything. We used to throw a little bit of bleach into the water, and that went on for years, until at one time my son said, Mommy, we could go in north, a lady said, if we come out with yellow bar. You know, they used to get this yellow five gallon, and my son, they used to go till out in north and bring the pipe water, and we treat it with bleach. That is how we start. In time, more development was brought to the community. The community benefited from a main access road, a water treatment plant and well, and electricity. The total upgrade of the community, however, remained incomplete. Since taking office, however, President David Granger has pledged the government's commitment towards ensuring that Sophia is provided with all the necessary facilities and services that a community should have. I have big dreams for Sophia. And I believe that your days of struggle and sacrifice are behind you, and you must look forward now to a bright future. Our task is to e eliminate extreme poverty. Our task is to provide full employment. Our task is to encourage entrepreneurs, young businessmen, who can make things and sell things. No ward in Georgetown must be left behind. And I would like to assure you that this government is not going to leave Sophia behind. The president promised to deliver a dignified community that can take its place with other wards in Georgetown. In addition to promising the delivery of the necessary infrastructure to the community, the president pledged to complete the regularization of the area thus forever removing the label of squatter settlements from Sophia. In keeping with the administration's vision to have uniform communities and to make the municipality of Georgetown undergo a major facelift, the administration has particularly honed in on squatting. 
This effort is being led by Ministry of Communities with Responsibility for Housing, Valerie Adams Patterson. Since assuming office in 2016, Minister Adams Patterson, moving in sync with the government's mandate to create safe and cohesive communities, has commenced a zero tolerance campaign against squatting. The minister to CHMPA began a process of regularizing some squatting areas across the city and relocating squatters from other high risk areas. Minister Patterson has also begun a promotion campaign of cautioning those bent on squatting to desist and cease squatting. As a minister responsible for housing, I cannot continue to have or allow that kind of situation to continue in our garden city. We have to bring order, we have to clean it up, and we have to really make our city look like one that we're happy and one that when our visitors come to Guyana, they must not see that kind of thing. My view is, and my intention is, if I'm going to relocate a squatter, I must be able to upgrade them in some way or the other upgrade their life. And so my belief is that we should be able to have some low-cost houses built, whether what farm we use, whether we use self-help, we use whatever. We build a house, and then we relocate that squatter. We would have given them a sense of decency, a sense of pride, Many of those squatters have children. The move to end squatting and regularized communities has seen focus on those pockets of area in the city where a number of mini houses can be seen built on dams and other parts of government reserve, which have been unoccupied for a number of years. Areas such as Middle Walk Dam, La Penitence, East and West Rumvelt Front Road, and Sophia. A renewed focus on ending squatting in Sophia and completing the community regularization process began in 2016. It was on August 24, 2016, exactly when Minister Adams Patterson and a team from the CHNPA visited the community and met with residents in an effort to address issues affecting the community development, including squatting. During that visit, the minister revealed projects that will come on stream shortly to reduce or even eliminate squatting in the area. The announcement was welcomed by the residents. Our challenges are great, but the minister will have addressed some, which we really um, appreciate, especially in the rent-to-own house. There's one the thing because there are so many children that start adults and with families and need to extend and be on their own, so that would be a very good thing for our children who turn adults and now become families and need to have their own. In the interim to deter, this is my suggestion, to deter the uh, quarters to continue to squat, people to continue going on the, the, the reserves. I'm suggesting because that we, if we, uh, we could get put down notices, big notices from north to south where look, squatter, squatting is illegal. If you continue to squat, you'll be prosecuted by law. And moving to end squatting in Sophia is a delicate matter. For those sections of the area where there are no residents living on reserves, it is simply a matter of having those lands demarcated and having those residents pay for their house lots and titles. The challenge comes with those squatters who have constructed on government reserves within the community. In Sophia, there are entire government reserves that are taken up by squatters. This is a hindrance to the overall development of the community. This creates challenges for the government in providing services or bringing industries or commerce to the area, as there will be no place to put them. These persons would therefore have to be moved. Since last year, the government has been wrestling with options as to what will be done with those residents that have to move. Minister Adams Patterson tells us that the government may be closer than we think in coming up with a viable alternative for these residents. The government, through CHMPA, is currently engaging financial agencies, including the Inter-American Bank, IDB, to secure funding to construct low-cost housing for those persons from Sophia and other squatting areas in the city that have to be removed. 
The area to construct these homes have already been identified. We are also engaging the attention of other um, international organizations. And I can say to you that even at government level, we are working on, we've already um, identified um, an area where we want to relocate squatters, particularly from Safai and Le Penitence and the Rumville areas. But my view is, and I know there are others who shared my view, to me it does not make sense. You remove a squatter from, let's say, Sophia, and you give them a piece of land somewhere, they're going to move the very shack they're living in to that location. So you're just transferring a shanty town from one area to the next. As I mentioned that we have identified an area, I didn't say where, but industry is the, <coughs> is the area that we um, set aside to have those low-income houses built because it's in close proximity to Sophia and, and East and West and so on. CHMPA has already carried out a survey as to the number of squatters that would have to be relocated. From data collected, the CHMPA is looking at the relocation of close to 12,000 persons. However, this figure only accounts for those persons who have been squatting for a certain number of years, not those who continue to build on squatting areas or those that rebuild on areas previously cleared of squatters. Since the government has announced that it would be relocating squatters from the reserve across the city and providing them with low-cost homes, there has been a mad rush for squatting, and overnight, some shacks are being erected across the city, particularly in Sophia. Minister Adams Patterson made it clear that those persons who are not on the ministry's inventory will be served notice to dismantle and remove. Further, they will not benefit from the low-cost homes arrangement. Tackling the squatting issues one community at a time is on the work plan for the Central Housing and Planning Authority. So the process, which began last year in Sophia, is now focused on other areas in the city, the East La Pennington's Rhinevelt area, commonly called Sideline Middle Walk. The CHNPA will be turning its attention to the East and West Rhinevelt Front Road community shortly. Efforts at Middle Walk La Penitence are particularly focused on regularizing, giving ownership of the lands to the squatters, who took up residence in that area some many years ago. This is a dream come true for these squatters. The previous government permits to land people for years that they didn't regularize the place and they did not. So we got a change and regularizing the place is not something very good. I've been living here for the past 13 years. I'm married and I live here with my husband. I'm born and grow here. Yeah, I'm going in Torty this year. My mother passed away. It's just me, my little brother, my little sister, my brother, and so on. Like a to facilitate the process of regularization, CHMPA has teamed up with the Lands and Survey Commission and is currently carrying out a block and occupation survey within the area. This allows them to make determination on issues such as the size of the lots that will be allocated to the residents. The survey also aids the CHMPA to identify areas that will be used to provide infrastructure services to the community. It will give determination as to whether any resident will have to be removed from the area as their continued presence will impede on the process of developing and upgrading the community. This area is known as Middle Road and we are in the process of regularizing the area. We are working central housing together with lands and surveys. Uh, we've come, in April we started a, a block and occupation survey where we numbered buildings we've numbered buildings we started in april 309 structures we've numbered and the design section of the chnpa uh, worked on a a design of um, the area like in terms of creating lots so we have that proposed design. Charles further highlighted how the process of regularization and relocation will ably assist the government in carrying out developmental projects in the area. Presently, we are working with lands and surveys as to uh, 
deciding or making a decision as to how much reserve would be left so that we would have access and um, so that the machine can move along to clean the canal. We know that there's a main canal here, a main drainage canal. So they're working on that presently. So when that is finalized, the occupiers would know how much adjustment or if they have to move their fences or so on so that we can finalize the plan and then we move on from there in terms of uh, deciding who would stay and who would have to be relocated. So and in the meantime, what we're doing at the, at the office at CHNPA, we're working with a community group, of course, and we are interviewing individuals, doing a application form and taking their information so that we would have their information on the database. So even if you have to be relocated, we would have you there so that we have your information so that when we start the relocation process, it would be easier. We, have, we know who the individuals who are there. Whilst most of the squatters who reside on Middle Walk, La Penitence will remain, all of those persons squatting along the embankment of the East and West Front Road are earmarked for relocation. Their continued presence at those locations are in contradiction to the government's vision of establishing safe, uniformed communities. Squatting in these two areas have serious environmental and other implications. Further, the squatting there has contributed to the continuous flooding in the area. This has been a heavy burden which the government has had to carry in the sum of millions of tax dollars spent to alleviate flooding. The extensive squatting in these areas prevents access to canals which facilitate drainage and irrigation works for the West and East Rumbelt area. The illegal occupancy of the state reserves make it impossible for the Ministry of Public Infrastructure and Mayor and City Council to access those reserves to dig the canals and the silt and clean drains to ease flooding in those areas. Squatting is illegal and it does not fit into our policy. We will never encourage illegal activities. And if you recall from the time his Excellency President Granger was sworn in. He spoke out nationally against squatting. And he said, stop the illegal occupation of land, go through the process. We know that, and let's be fair, in the past, um, some persons applied for so many years, and some people would have gone into squatting out of frustration. Some would have gone into it out of need because sitting here as minister, I can tell you the amount of stories that came to me, and some of them are very touching. And uh, there was a need in some cases for some people to get some place to live. And so I believe out of that kind of desperation, some people went into squatting. Minister Adams Patterson explains that the government has made it easier for persons already squatting to apply for lands that they occupy. Additionally, the entire application process for those lots at the CHMPA has been revamped and made easier. So our policy when it comes to acquisition of land is that you come into the office, we have regional offices also. You purchase a form for $200. I'm so accustomed to the thousands. For $200, you fill it. You're issued with a slip that um, indicate to you what documents you're required to bring. In the past, um, when you submit the documents, you were told that or you'll be called for the interview. That has changed. Once you come in with the application form and your documents, interview is done immediately. And you're issued with a letter which says to you that you were interviewed and um, you will now qualify for a house lot, whether low income, moderate, middle or high income. That now 
will allow you to have an allocation. The aim of all of this is to contribute to the restoration of the Garden City. Better homes, better communities that will make a better city, making Guyana a better country. The Mayor and City Council of Georgetown, along with partner agencies and ministries, will also be able to effectively carry out community improvement projects. All of this is part of the government's agenda of creating sustainable developed communities. It is also part of the government's mandate of ensuring that every person owns their own home and has access to land. The Central Housing and Planning Authority is also preparing a comprehensive squatter regularization and relocation plan as part of the process of addressing squatting. This plan would encompass all of the areas that are to be regularized as well as those that cannot be regularized. That's all for 411 This Week. I am Zemil Williams. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.